know Ip Man was a grandmaster for a reason, but he couldn't have done all this stuff. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things the Ip Man movies got factually right and wrong. For this list, we're sticking with the core four Ip Man movies in which Ip Man is the central character, and thus discounting the spin-off Master Z Ip Man Legacy in which he does not appear. <laughs> Number 10. Ip Man Trained Bruce Lee. True. As many people know, Bruce Lee had the kind of screen and real-life presence that overshadowed all others. So it's not surprising to note that Ip Man is arguably best remembered for bringing up the young dragon. While the franchise does well to keep the spotlight on Ip, they do give fans some proper teases in the second and third Ip Man movies. With a child Bruce Lee propositioning Master Ip in the former, and a grown-up Lee strutting his stuff in the latter. While their adventure together in Ip Man 4 the finale has no basis in reality, we can't deny that actor Danny Chan adds a dynamic layer to the series with his embodiment of Lee. Number 9. Ip Man Practice Wing Chun. True. Wing Chun. Ip Man. Okay, if the movies had gotten this one wrong, then we'd have a serious problem. A form of Kung Fu, Wing Chun is a light, composed form of self-defense that sees practitioners use their opponent's forcefulness against them. Towards the end of his life, Ip Man himself described it as, quote, maintaining one's flexibility and softness, all the while keeping in the strength to fight back, much like the flexible nature of bamboo. To prepare for the role of Ip Man, mixed martial artist Donnie Yen practiced Wing Chun for nine months under the tutelage of his character's real-life son, Ip Chun, who was in awe of Yen's ability to pick it up so fast. Yeah, us too. Okay, let's deal. Seems to me that your Wing Chun this is the fastest Wi-Fi backpack. Number eight, Ip Man fought a British boxer. False. This will be a piece of cake, mate. Just go out there and get him, slugger. As great as this fight is at the end of Ip Man 2, which showcases martial arts going up against boxing, it has more in common with Rocky IV than actual history. Sure, it's an exhilarating climax to end the film on, but never did an English boxer by the name of Taylor the Twister Miller come to Hong Kong in an effort to accentuate Western fighting styles over Eastern ones. Not only did Ip Man never engage in such a fight, but he only retroactively came to such prominence in the worldwide martial arts zeitgeist upon the advent of Bruce Lee. So just chalk this one up as another fictional climax, like his supposed bout with some Nung in Ip Man 3. <laughs> Number 7. Ip Man opened a school in Hong Kong. True. Learning Kung Fu isn't cheap. You paying their fees? Guess you owe me again. In the first Ip Man film, Ip Man refuses to teach Wing Chun publicly, only engaging in private sparring matches with friends. Upon his emigration from Foshan to Hong Kong, however, Ip is forced to open a Wing Chun school to support his family. <laughs> While this mostly falls in line with reality, the circumstances surrounding it vary. For one, his family only briefly lived with him in Hong Kong. More on that later. The 1960s saw Ip dealing with financial instability, prompting him to form the Wing Chun Athletic Association in 1967. According to former student Duncan Leung, some of this money went towards his opium addiction, something the movies certainly did not acknowledge. Number 6. Ip Man Traveled to America. False. So you're a teacher? I am a teacher. I teach Chinese Kung Fu. To wrap up the series, Ip Man 4, the finale, sees the titular Grandmaster accepting Bruce Lee's invitation to visit San Francisco in an attempt to find better schooling for his son Ip Ching. There, because he's Ip Man, he of course gets embroiled in the kung fu controversies happening overseas. Though the plot manages to incorporate multiple branches of Ip Man's life, there's no reason to believe that Ip Man ever left Hong Kong, let alone Asia, especially if he'd been recently diagnosed with throat cancer. And seeing as the movie takes place in 1964, Ip Ching would in reality have been 28 at the time. A tad too old to attend high school anywhere. 
Yeah. Number five, Ip Man was wealthy. True. Mommy said, start fighting or everything will be broken. Though the Ip Man franchise typically shows the Grandmaster in dire straits, his depiction at the beginning of the first film as a wealthy homeowner was right on the money. Upon seeing the first film, Ip Man's son, Ip Chun, did comment that the mansion shown was larger than the real one, but Ip Man's comfortability with not needing to teach Wing Chun in Foshen was indeed accurate. I was just lucky. Whatever. You were the treasure of Canton. That isn't to say that Ip didn't hold down work there, however, as the real Ip Man spent much of his time serving as a police officer in Foshan. It would be our honor if you placed it in your house. Uh, thank you very much. Number four, the Japanese invasion forced Ip into poverty. False. In 1937, the Second Sino-Japanese War saw Japan's forces invading mainland China, and that's about where the similarities end. Though depicted as being taken over almost immediately, Ip Man's hometown of Foshan was not occupied until late 1938. Ip Man soon left to stay with one of his former students, Kwok Fu. My friend, you need a job? Uh, yeah, come on up. Thank you. He wouldn't return until the war ended in 1945, when Ip Man essentially resumed his status as a police officer. He began training his son Ip Ching in Wing Chun some years later. Daddy, you practice martial arts, right? Why did you stop it? I get hungry when I exercise, so I need to exercise less. Number three, Ip Man fled Foshan from the Japanese. False. Ip Man fled Foshan. That much is true. But when and from whom are all wrong in the film? Seeing as how he worked as a police officer for the Nationalist Party Kuomintang, the Communist Party winning the Chinese Civil War in 1949 was bad news for Ip. So he and his family left their life of luxury and started over in the nearby British-controlled Hong Kong. While absconding in the wake of defeating a Japanese general in hand-to-hand -hand combat and getting shot for his troubles is cinematic, it isn't the slightest bit true. It's so untrue, in fact, that he only left Foshan for good roughly a dozen years after the film said he did. Number two, Ip Man's wife died of cancer. True. <laughs> <laughs> Ip Man 3 is arguably the most poignant of the three movies, deriving much of its pathos from the relationship between Ip Man and cancer-stricken wife Cheung Wing Sing. While Ip Man putting his marriage over his martial arts reputation is touching, it's not exactly how things actually played out, as the two hadn't seen each other for a total of nine years upon her death in 1960. <laughs> Shortly after arriving in Hong Kong, Chiang Wing Sing returned to Foshan to retrieve identity cards, only to be blockaded by the subsequently established borders between China and Hong Kong in 1951, keeping her there. Not to burst your bubble further, but Ip Man even had a mistress from 1955 to 1968, with whom he had an illegitimate son. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Ip Man fought a Japanese general. False. Moto. He wants you to come back. I didn't come here for the rice. In what is undeniably one of the most rousing and cinematic scenes in the Ip Man franchise, Ip Man takes down the Japanese karate master General Miura in front of a zealous crowd of supporters in Foshan. It's a spectacular finale, but it didn't exactly go down that way in reality, if at all. While some reports corroborate the notion that Ip Man rejected the Japanese's offer for him to train their soldiers, he definitely didn't seek a match itself. <laughs> If anything, it's more likely he was challenged by the Japanese, and any subsequent bout that did transpire most certainly did not involve a general or take place in a public square. So take this climax with a big grain of salt. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.